Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to get started testing our project and to do that we're going to use Jest which is uh, Facebook's JavaScript testing framework. Relatively new but it's picking up pace. To get it into our project we want to just follow the installation instructions yarn add D for development and just let it do its thing. And again as it says in here so this is how you would create a test we're going to follow this structure where we've got the underscore tests directory, but you can also just name your files using the, this convention of dot test or dot spec JS, and it will pick them up. As we'll see, we already have some leftovers that will come from the boilerplate, which will run because of that convention. And then, as you can see, it says in the package.json, make sure to, to make this change. So, what I'm going to do just jump into my package.json and change up the one that comes from the boilerplate. It's for jest. And let's just give that a test. No pun intended. You can see there it's picking up this one from the source components directory about page spec.js. And again, it's picking that up because of the convention. So let's just delete that because we don't really want that in our, our project. And then let's go ahead and create that directory structure as it suggests. And I want to begin by testing my request reducer. So what I'm going to do is just create the identical directory structure up here and then a file with the same name. And I use this convention of dot react test just so that on the off chance I don't end up importing the wrong file in my real code. So I'll get both of them open side by side. And we'll start off by writing a describe, which you may, if you've ever used JavaScript testing libraries before, be immediately familiar with this syntax. So I'm describing how the request reducer should function. And we'll say it has a default state. And so really what we're testing here is just this section. And we want to ensure that sending request starts off as false. So we'll say expect something, which we've not really defined as of yet, to equal and then something. And that something is going to be this default state. So I'm just going to take a copy of that, drop it in my to equal. And so that should be by default how it works. And let's try running that. And of course it doesn't work at the moment because we've not set up properly at all. But you can see the test itself is actually running. Let's just clear that off and try and make this pass. So I'm going to start off by importing the request reducer from. And then we've got to go up. So I've got, I've got to get back to that directory where this request reducer lives. And you can see here it lives in source reduces request reducer but I'm currently in tests, reducers, request reducer. So what I need to do is go up to this directory, then to this directory, which is the equivalent level of the source directory. And then I can go back down the tree. So I've gone up a directory, dot, dot, up, and then dot, dot to go up again. So now we're at tests. And now I should be able to go to source, reducers, request reducer. And if I've got the request reducer, you may wish to call that import reducer and then it makes a little bit more sense. But you can say if we're sending in an undefined, because if it's undefined, it's going to fall back to the default. Whereas if we sent in anything else, it would not take that default. So if we send in an undefined and, a, and an action and an action again is just an object. And we'll just say this object has a type of unexpected or something. Then in that case, we should expect to get back this object where sending request is false. So let's try it and we got a passing test. So let's write a test case for sending request as well. Even though we've already implemented the logic as such, let's start off and pretend that we haven't. So we'll say our request, it's going to take the state of undefined. So it should fall back to this default. But this time we're going to send in a type of sending request. And as we use a constant here, we might as well use the same constant in our test. But of course, we're not in that same directory structure. So we need to go up a directory to get back to source constants action types. Let's see if we can't format this a little bit nicer. So this time we're going to have a type of sending request. And our payload is going to be sending request of true. And so we expect the outcome to be true also. So let's just run that test and ensure it's failing. And then let's uncomment this and see if we can get back to a passing state. 
Excellent. Now, another nice thing that we can do is add in some coverage. So we'll get a coverage report. So what I'm going to do is just change up the command that runs under test to jest dash dash coverage. And let's try that again. And you can see we get some nice output. Now, of course, we don't want to keep having to run this manually every time we make a change. It would be nice if we could watch for any changes and automatically rerun the tests. So again, let's jump back into our package.json file and under test watch, you can see we have one set up already. npm run test dash dash watch. So let's give that a shot. In fact, we can use yarn, npm yarn. It doesn't really matter. Test watch. But what's really nice about Jest is this section here. And as your project grows, this one becomes really useful. So press P to filter. So if we press P, then we can say we actually only want to run request reducer. You don't need to full type the full name in as long as it's going to be relatively unique. Then this time we only run that request reducer test. As I say, it's a bit sort of contrived at this stage because we don't have many tests or many test files. We only have the one. But if you've got many test files and you only really care about working on one file, it's really nice so that you don't have to keep rerunning the tests for every single file. Even though your test should be pretty quick anyway, it does make it much quicker just to run it on a per file basis. So that's a very quick introduction to testing with Jest. In the very next video, we're going to get started fleshing out our request reducer to be a little bit more robust.